up was on uh, our school cellos and why they're so terrible. Um, so yeah, we were trying to determine uh, if and what the physical differences between good and bad cellos are. In um, terms of tone quality. Yeah. So we thought that uh, we, we define good and bad as having good or bad tone. Um, Yes, so this is a video where a guy plays the not so good cello and then a good cello. So. <laughs> playing the cello, it's really easy to tell, I found. Um, so yes, here's our nice analogy that bad tone is to good tone as chocolate milk is to chocolate gelato. Yeah. So that's fun. Um, we thought that uh, cellos that vibrate more would have a better tone. Um, so we had Emma play her cello, and we set up a, uh, a force sensor here, and then we did another time here um, to measure the <coughs> the vibrations on the front and back of the cello um, as Emma played a C major scale. Um, we just picked C major because it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, we also used Audacity to record the four open strings of each cello um, and also the first verse of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, which we'll get to hear later. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right now, actually. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. So we did four cellos. Um, three of them were terrible, and one of them was good. Yes. <coughs> Here's the first one, hopefully. <laughs> Cello was the best. 
Um, this is an example of a graph we made <coughs> of force over time. Um, and it, that, that would be the red part. The yes. green part is um, like about when we change notes. Yes. So each of these either peaks or valleys is where the note changed. Um, so you can see, I don't know if this is a good one to show, but like here, right when we changed note, the force dropped off immediately. And we and found that was a general trend of the graph. Yeah. That um, when we changed notes, there was less vibration. No, not, not notes. Sorry, Sorry strings. strings. So when you're playing the scale, you stay on one string for four notes, then you switch strings. So maybe it's not vibrating because there's a little time where obviously you're not playing. So yeah. Um, yeah, the green line is where we change notes. Yeah, and so um, it would the force would drop when Emma changed strings and when she shifted. Like she couldn't play the whole scale in one position. Like she had to move her t her hand down. And so you're not supposed to keep playing when you move the hand, because otherwise you get this like slidey thing yeah, that sounds bad. So. You mean it sounds like country music? Well, there's that too. Oh. There are certain cases where you want that, but playing a scale is not one of those. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's super exciting. Yeah. Okay, and then this is... Um, the audacity. Yes, so this is the open A string. Um, I'm pretty sure that first peak is the note A, and then each of these peaks are the overtones that are present. Um, around here, they're not really like um, audible, but so the peaks indicate a note which resonated. The first peak is the note that actually resonated. Um, the fewer the peaks, the clearer the tone will be because there's less overtones that are like I don't know, clashing, I guess. Um, as, uh, actually, as you can see with um, like the various cellos, so remember cellos one and two were in the middle, cello three was the worst, and cello four was the best, uh, which we thought was interesting. Um, okay, so then we decided, okay, let's make a graph of uh, force versus frequency, um, so like by each note, um, and you can see um, Cello four is this red line, and it kind of moves, but not really, as compared to cello three, which, which like is this has huge thing. peaks. Yeah, yeah, which would indicate that it, uh, like, the force changes a lot, so it vibrates a lot. Yes. Um, <coughs> looks crazy. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um. If we were to actually do this again, we would probably note the time at which we changed notes so we could be exactly sure, because we more so did an average of where it changed. Yeah, we weren't completely sure where, uh, yeah. so that was some error. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also would have uh, probably tried to tune more carefully, um, and we... Oh yeah, we recorded some of these in a practice room and some of them in the orchestra room. So that's like different echoes and yeah. mess with our sound a little. And also, um, we use the same bow on all the cellos, but it's hard to keep bow pressure constant, which could have an effect on the tone. So our hypothesis was very wrong, because yeah. um, cello three vibrated the most and had the worst tone. So we think that like the fuzziness that you heard on cello three could be attributed to how much it vibrates. Like, it was vibrating so much that it just started buzzing. Yeah. Um. Uh, and then, yeah, oh, and then you can see cello one and cello two, the two, like, ab the middle ones, they um, looked really similar in terms of our data, but they sound very different. Um, <coughs> like, one of them was, uh, like, warm, and the other one was... Uh, they, their tones were very different. <laughs> so, okay. um, so we think that this has to do with the difference in their strings, actually. Like, because we we can't have uh, all of our cellos have the same exact strings. That's expensive um, and also difficult. Like, cello strings are harder to change because yeah. they're big. Um, so yeah, so then we, in conclusion, we think that difference in tone comes from difference in vibrations. Um, we also think that this could uh, be the difference between, like, or why a violin sounds different than a flute, for example, because they vibrate differently. Uh, 
Question? Yeah. I <clears throat> noticed that uh, in the audio trials for Twinkle Twinkle, um, the it was when we got the lowest note that the greatest distinction was made in in my impression yes like when when you dropped to that low note the first three i was like ah that doesn't sound very good but the fourth one was a smoother a more pleasant transition yeah. can you talk about that um yeah i don't know the lower notes it's more e it's easier to tell because um how do i i don't know <laughs> yeah it's harder to play the lower notes sounding good, I guess. Like, it's more difficult to get lower notes to sound good. So I guess the difference in tone is way easier to tell there, just because if you're playing it with the same bow pressure and all of that, it's um, not going to sound the same. Like, you have to do different bow pressures on the lower notes to get it to have good tone. And so since I wasn't trying to do any of that, I think it's more obvious. Well, and I think that, like, because lower notes, like, they're, um, I guess their, their frequency is lower, their wavelength is bigger, um, they cause things to vibrate more, right? Like, that's why bass makes your car vibrate more. Yeah. Um, so, any imperfections in the cello, I guess, would be easier to tell if you have something vibrating more on, like, lower notes. I'm thinking of resonance as well, perhaps the resonance of the body, because the body is large, like your car would resonate at a very low frequency, cause, just because it's a lot of mass, right? Maybe the cello being large has yeah. that. Um, a, a second thought that I had was um, was that the buzzing is maybe a loose joint in the wood. Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, that's possible. Um, there's, like at the very bottom of the cello, there's this tailpiece that's connected to the end, and sometimes that'll just buzz really badly. So I don't know if that was, if you were able to hear that on the audio files, but that could be a part of it, which would be another reason why the school tellers are terrible. Okay. <laughs> They're terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.